In this video, I'm going to talk about retention policies. Now, retention policies are available as a part of the Dataverse within your Microsoft Power Apps application. Now, retention policy option is available not in the Power Platform Admin Center, but it is available as a part of Maker Portal. So if you navigate to make.powerapps.com, you should be able to see the retention policies. Now, what are retention policy? Basically, retention policies allows you or retain your organization's inactive data within Dataverse in a compliant and a cost effective way. So basically it is for compliance purposes and also for cost storage perspective as well. Like say, if you want to offload some of the inactive data into a different storage, from a Dataverse perspective, you can do that and you can save on the premium Dataverse storage space. Now, audit tables and elastic tables aren't supported for a long-term retention admins set retention policies on the tables when app maker enables long-term retention for table now dataverse retention policies are solution aware so you can take the data retention policy dataverse retention policy and then migrate from one environment to another environment now again i have put the statement audit tables and elastic tables aren't supported so that means if you go into the audit tables and elastic tables it is not supported okay uh, now i've seen that uh, uh, people might be using a retention policy because it really doesn't make sense to again uh, audit uh, again basically use the audit tables and um, use it for a long-term retention storage perspective because the purpose is different so here what i'm talking about is any custom table or any table which is available as a part of dataverse apart from the audit table or of the type elastic tables they aren't supported for a long-term retention but over a period of time this may uh, be available now once you create that policy and apply the policy policy might take around 70 to 96 hours to run from a dataverse storage perspective Dataverse long-term retention requires no additional storage purchases from the user perspective. So take, for example, there is a calculation. So uh, I'll just do a, a quick calculation. So take, for example, you have 100 GB of Dataverse uh, space, okay? And maybe you might have now what you have done is like you have taken the 20 GB into the retention space, right? So retention, uh, by running the retention policy, you have offloaded the 20 GB to the retention storage. So if this is your Dataverse space and if this is your uh, retention space, so uh, what you have done, you have taken from out of those 100 GB, you have offloaded the 20 GB over here. So now this is 20 and now this has become 80. Now your Dataverse storage capacity, currently it will show as 80 plus something because this will be stored in Dataverse itself. However, it will be in an like kind of like an offline storage. Now, what we have seen, like just, just by the general uh, uh, documentation, uh, Microsoft has mentioned that at least expect a 50% compression. So that means if you have offloaded 20 GB of storage, then quite possible that that might only take say maybe 10 GB of storage. So what the overall net net effect would be 80 plus 10, that means it is 90 GB now. So that means you have effectively stored uh, 90 GB of data with the help of retention. So you have net net saving of 10 GB. Okay. Now remember for the file and uh, other resources based application like web resources, you won't get that 50% compression. However, for the records, you will get 50% compression or maybe sometimes you might get more as well. Okay, so this is just a basic calculation. Now, this looks very small because I've just given an example of 100 gigs. But then if you go into like a 1000 gig calculation, then there will be a lot of spaces uh, which will be uh, available for you to use for the uh, active uh, record set. Now, retention status goes into multiple status, like first it goes into scheduled, in-progress retention, pending reconciliation, in-progress reconciliation, pending delete. So it goes into this entire life cycle process. You need not be worried about it, but then you can actually see what when, we, when you start the retention process it will uh, be in either of the state okay so the policy has been scheduled to run when you start scheduling the policy then it goes into that retention in progress mode uh, 
okay so it changes from data state from active to inactive non-active uh, then we have a pending reconciliation state whereby you uh, the system waits to reconcile the retained records in data versus long-term retention so this is a process where the retention actually uh, gets started and then we have in progress reconciliation pending delete so pending delete means it again deletes the row from all waiting to delete all retained rows so any retained rows in the long term storage will have to be removed from the data verse right so that's pending delete and once it is deleted you have the entire retention process completed uh, and if there is a failure uh, then you will be see uh, seen the failed status and the retention process failed will be the state for that now how to enable this retention so first you need to navigate to a table and you need to just tick this box once you tick this box you are basically essentially enabling the long-term retention now if you go to make a portal you will see the retention policies on the left hand side uh, once you see that click on new retention policy once you create that new retention policy it will ask you to fill out the name and then uh, specify the table name now you have select you have to select a table and within that table you should be able to uh, start that long-term retention process you need to specify a view usually people will specify the inactive view because any record which is inactive you may not use it for a future purpose uh, so you can specify that view and then once that is done you will be able to see all the status now remember the status which i was talking about is here you will be able to see all the uh, status which i have uh, shown you in that table previously uh, will be uh, will be going through that entire life cycle process and once it is done you will be seen as uh, we'll be seeing some status as like completed um, retention and you can also see how many records were retained in that last run. Now, retention backend table. So there are backend table which does all this operation and store all the information. So there is a heap of a uh, table like retention cleanup info, cleanup operation, config, failure detail, success details. So all this information, if you want to query or have some sort of an application built in, you can also do that. Okay, so this will give you that complete picture from a dataverse perspective. Retention policies are solution aware. So if you want to move the retention policies configuration from dev to test to prod, you can do that just by looking into other retention config and then you can add that existing retention config into your solution. Now let's jump into the demo. So this is a simple model driven app, which I have created. It is a table which is pointed to an Olympics table and it has some records there are some active records and then there are some inactive records so if i click on inactive you can see um, like say around seven records over here inactive seven records and active five records so what i've done is like in the, in the course of like last couple of days i have marked record as inactive and i have created a retention policy now how to create a retention policy go to make.powerapps.com on the left hand side click on retention policies and then once you click on retention policies you should be able to see all the retention policies which are available and you can also create a new one now i've already created one retention policy but i will show you how to create a retention policy so first what you need to do click on new retention policy and specify the table now there will be some set of tables which will be available over here right like olympics activity connection these are like out of the box tables if your table does not appear over here then what you need to do you need to go into the tables whatever table you want so take for example if i navigate to tables and if i go to custom and if i go to basketball sports over here okay i go into the table and then go into the properties and i will mark that go to advanced options and enable the long-term retention and i'll click on save now this is an important step because if you do not do that you will not be able to see that table within this drop down right so after some time you should be able to see the basketball table over here as well so if you do not see just cancel that out uh, click on refresh and then you click on new retention policy and it might take some time for that table to appear okay now once that table appears you can go ahead and select that table and select the view which you want to retain in a long-term storage okay so you click on new retention policy select the table and then you select that whatever table you want so i'll just select olympics table over here 
okay and then you specify the retention policy name now here you need to specify what will be the policy name okay now usually what people do is like for every table you have an active and inactive view so under criteria you can select whatever view you want usually it will be inactive view so i'll say inactive olympics view and i'll say uh, inactive olympics record retention and you can even specify the date time as well so take for example i'll just put date as say 24th august or maybe 25th august 2024 okay and you can specify when you want that retention policy to be started so i can specify the start date and time remember you cannot select a past date and time okay so if i select just a past date and time it will just error out okay it will not allow me to create uh, the retention policy frequency i can specify once daily monthly weekly yearly and then i'll click on save okay and then once you click on save you should be able to uh, save that record now if i just select 8 47 am it says archival policy start time cannot be in the past so i need to select a date and time which is way uh, ahead right so currently it is 9 28 over here i can select after 9 28 9 32 and it will allow me to save right i'm not going to save this i'll just cancel this out because i've already created this retention policy now once you create a retention policy you let me show you the retention policy which i have created i'll just click on it and then it will give me the history of what has happened so in the last couple of days what i've done is like i have moved a couple of records to inactive and that's why it is picking up those record every day at 3 pm and then it starts processing it now on 22nd it has processed let me show you this record run id and here it will show you that two records were in inactive state and it has gone through that entire retain process nothing has failed and the retention has happened in the long-term storage similarly uh, day before um, this has happened for five records and total records archived in the last run is five now yesterday um, it has gone through that same process and now we have seven records in the retained state so it has just uh, added that in that uh, repository right so this indicates that we have successfully configured the retention policies now in retention policy you can see the history just by clicking on this button over here and you can see the entire history and you can see the policy detail what have you configured now here i have configured criteria as inactive employee view i started it on 22nd 3 pm and it will run daily okay so it is like a uh, daily process which gets triggered i can even deactivate this retention policy now if i click on deactivate it says are you sure you want to deactivate and then once that happens then you will not be able to get any runs right and even i can delete this retention policy so in uh, in short uh, what we have done is like we have created a retention policy so retention policy will take the record from your dataverse and put it in a storage which will allow you to uh, save on the space and at the same time those record will become read only now there are some catches okay which you need to understand now before i go into the catches let me show you the solution perspective now in the solution you can go to add existing go to more go to other and then start looking into retention config in retention config you will be able to see the retention policy which you have created and you can add into your solution right so that's it's solution aware and you can use that to migrate from solution from dev to qa to prod also uh, if i go into the tables now once you set or enable that retention policy within your organization then uh, if i just type in retention click on all there are backend table which are created like retention cleanup info retention cleanup operation retention config retention operation these are the backend supporting table which helps the retention policy process now you need not do anything you, it's just like i'm showing you just for the knowledge purpose so if i click on retention operation i should be able to see all the backend operation which has happened uh, within the system so if you do not see all the information you can go ahead and select uh 
the various columns which are available like owner retention config id retention count logical name start name start time status and all those things and then you should be able to see which table which uh, retention policy has been triggered and at what time okay so like this you will be able to see the background operations from a retention perspective now there is a nice documentation which microsoft has provided now you need to go through that because there are some important things which microsoft has clearly mentioned that the retention policy must be a managed environment so if your environment is not managed you'll not be able to use that functionality okay also the retention policy how it works is like first when you start building an application you have an active data right and what happens is like uh, there are some record which you will mark as inactive and then that has to be taken to the retention policy for compliance audit legal discovery purposes so then you put that in uh, an inactive state right and this is the last step if you want to delete the data like you do not want that data to reside even in an inactive state then you can delete that data so these are the three steps which you need to undergo through the entire dataverse lifecycle data management process right deleted data gets permanently deleted data lifecycle is completed from that point onwards now how it works how the storage capacity works uh, it says notice that the policy takes 70 to 96 hours to complete and then there is an additional 24 hours afterwards for the database capacity reports to appear so you can view the storage capacity reports so if you navigate to power platform admin center here you will be able to see the uh, retained process for that specific entity in the system as well but it takes time okay so if you do it yesterday you'll not be able to see this information over here quickly but it will take 70 to 96 hours for that report to run and then another 24 hours to, for that database capacity reports to appear so uh, it, they have given you whole bunch of documentation around how to understand the legal term retention cost storage cost so i gave an example of 100 gigs you know it's similar to that uh, average compression of at least 50 percent for the retained data size uh, is uh, like they have mentioned over here but make a note of this for file and image attachments data was long-term retention doesn't reduce capacity consumed so many people might think that hey if i have this record with file and image attachment as a part of note then i'm going to in, put it in inactive state no it will not be able to uh, reduce significantly so that you need to take uh, into consideration so it is not uh, that you'll be able to uh, further compress that particular record but yes if there is a data uh, record which is like a, a one of the rows within a table then it will do that solution aware i mentioned to you so it's a nice bit of documentation have a read into that because this is pretty much important from a legal compliance perspective uh, for many of the organization which you might be working on so that's it folks this is all about dataverse long-term retention thanks for watching